incredibly exciting. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> getting greeted at the airport by the Vasco fans, um, just the ride through Rio uh, and uh, understanding the culture and the, the different parts of the city, ultimately making it to, uh, to the training grounds uh, uh, bordered by the City of God. I mean, it really just an incredible experience to see uh, everything that everybody uh, in this country um, knows, which is that uh, Vasco has this incredible tradition um, and culture that uh, is really uh, ingrained in, 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 in the Vasco fans. And um, we're really excited uh, about the ability to preserve that culture, history and tradition, um, and to, uh, to help bring Vasco uh, into the, the 21st century and, and, and uh, to help uh, restore its place uh, uh, in, uh, in international football. Um, and um, I think maybe the responsibility that we take most seriously um, is uh, the responsibility to preserve, preserve and perpetuate its tradition of um, uh, historic uh, social, uh, social, uh, 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 social policy, which, which to us um, is a unique part of our agenda at 777. Um, you know, the, the, the idea that, that Vasco was perhaps the, the most important part of uh, the history of sports civil disobedience with the historic response. I mean, it's, I, I think, it, you know, it, most people in sport would consider that uh, the, the preeminent, uh, the preeminent uh, piece of, uh, of sports social dis disobedience. And I think it really set the stage for what sport looks like um, in, in a new world. And so, um, you know, we take that responsibility very seriously, uh, along with all of the other responsibilities to help restore the, the club's uh, sporting performance and uh, its facilities and, um, and to, uh, to help perpetuate uh, better fan engagement. All of these things are, are things that are, that are incredibly important to us, but the social responsibility uh, is a unique one. You are now in one of the most historic places in, I can say, Brazilian history, which is this stadium. Uh, it's 95 years old. What plans do you have for São Januário? What do you think about São Januário now, the structure and everything? And what plans do you have for the future? Yeah, um, I, I mean, it's uh, it's incredible to see structures that uh, that have been around for a hundred years. In, you know, in Genoa, we uh, we also uh, play in a stadium that uh, that was. Uh, uh, that was built in 1911 um, uh, at Luigi Ferrari, and so um, uh, you know, I I never expected that we would be part of uh, two incredibly historic stadiums, um, and uh, uh, you know, I I, I think that. Uh, the stadium today is, is a beautiful stadium, and, and it really uh, you really sort of understand the history by walking through it. Um, but of course, uh, it could use some improvements and uh, some technology and uh, some commercialization. And so we're excited to be able to provide the resources uh, to do that, and we're hopeful to embark on a project um, in the coming years where where we can completely restore both the the, the parts of the stadium, the facade that are that are uniquely historically historically important, um, but then also uh, modernize it uh, so that uh, it affords the fans a much better fan experience and um, and allows uh, for better fan engagement and uh, and all of the um, all of the things that uh, anyone would expect going into a new modern stadium. We have a big match this Sunday. You are staying here to watch it uh, in Maracanã. We know there is a lot of difference between the budgets of Flamengo and Vasco, so and, and Flamengo won the first match. So they had the advantage. What, what do you expect to see from the Vasco team on, on this Sunday? And talk a little bit about the future. Can we expect uh, in a few months or, in a few, or next year maybe uh, this difference of budget between these, these two clubs, the two the greatest rivals in Rio de Janeiro? Well, first of all, I expect to, to see a win tomorrow, uh, Sunday in Maracanã. I met with the players uh, yesterday. Everybody was really excited and energetic. I think um, as as I, you know, I've sort of gotten some feedback from the, the, the fan response. I think everybody's really excited about this project uh, in Rio, and uh, it's going to be great for not only Vasco, but I think for Brazilian football in general. Um, uh, you know, th there's one promise that I can make to the Vasco fans, and, and that is that this will be the last time in history on Sunday where Vasco goes into a match against Flamengo with uh, uh, a budget uh, disadvantage. Okay. Uh for next year, then? Next year, 2020. Yeah, 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 sure. And yeah. about Maracanã, are you going there tomorrow, right? And, uh, tomorrow and on Sunday. Yeah, and do you 
been through you as Mark on for a roster? I know there's been a lot of discussion about it, and, and uh, of, of course it's something that I think is interesting, uh, interesting to the club in the short term. Um, but um, you know, we're just starting to get into the stadium and uh, and the potential projects that exist, and and uh, where where we can play. Um, and over the coming months, I think uh, you know we're going to do a lot of work and analysis uh, to determine what what we think is best. But but yes, I th we think it's interesting. Yeah, so we're 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 working uh, right now as we speak. Our team uh, uh, at seven 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 and the, and the, with the Vasco team to try to help identify uh, what the best talent is out there that can help immediately. And I think one of the unique things about seven seven seven's participation, uh, not only in Vasco but in other clubs around the world, is that we have this uh, set of resources that exist at our holding company that we can allow uh, everybody to use to help identify uh, best in class talent, to help identify. Uh, you know, uh, proper trading, uh, uh, proper trading uh, assets, and um, and uh, to immediately uh, utilize those resources for the benefit of Vasco and and, and the other clubs. And so, uh, our team, uh, not only at the holding company, but at some of the other clubs, uh, are working to to help Vasco right now. And our hope is that we'll we'll have some things to announce in the near future. Okay, just the last question: What are you going to bring to Miami from this from this trip? Not the vacation for this trip. Well, the, fir the first thing I'm going to bring, and maybe the thing I'm most proud of, is my uh, my new membership card to uh, to Vasco. Um, so uh, I think uh, this is this is one of the more unique things I've ever been given, uh, and uh, I'm going to cherish it. And uh, it'll be framed on my wall in uh, in Miami in my office. Um, and uh, and all of the all, all of the the jerseys over the last few days. And then um, I'm sure my wife uh, is going to want something, uh, so I'm, I'll bring her back a gift and something for my daughter, uh, who's 21 months old, and uh, uh, probably try to bring something very uh, Brazilian back. If you have any suggestions, I, I, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. She's 21, right? Yeah, she's no 20 month, months old. Oh, 21 right. months old. Yeah, so, yeah. Not Caipirinha. No, not Caipirinha. No, maybe for my wife. Yeah. Maybe for my wife. You are having a meet with the mayor today, right? We are. Yeah. And the, uh, can you talk about the thoughts? I think it's just to, to, to get to know each other. Uh, uh, you know, it's the first time uh, that we're here, and uh, so always great to meet the political leadership. Um, uh, I'm hopeful uh, uh, that um, uh, that we can talk about uh, the facilities and uh, and the team and uh, our expansion plans uh, in the future, um, and um, uh, and build a relationship with him. You know, we want we want to be a part not only of Vasco, but we want to be a part of the city. Uh, we we want to help as much as we can to develop around Vasco uh, so that um, uh, we become an integral part of the culture. Uh